Hey, how's it going guys? This is your boy Hayes, and today we're going to be doing a video about Frost DK weapon swapping. Whether it's PvP or PvE, we're going to be talking about it and discussing it and going over how the heck you're going to be doing this correctly, especially with the global cooldown implementation of swapping weapons on the PTR and of course in Shadowlands since I did have somebody test this out on Shadowlands and we do have recorded footage of it and it seems to have worked very well. So so let's go ahead and jump into this video and talk about this. The first thing we need to talk about is the global cooldown. Now, what is a global cooldown? So let's go ahead and hit this dummy. Now, global cooldown is when you hit a target and it consumes a global cooldown. It's what Pillar of Frost and Empowered Rune Weapon were completely taken off. So now that we understand what a global cooldown does, whenever you switch weapons, you get a global cooldown. But you see, this isn't a normal global cooldown. No, not at all not a normal global cooldown now this one it doesn't consume the same global cooldown as your other abilities when you use another ability you can still switch weapons directly after using the ability so it resets the global cooldown but it resets as the same cooldown just a point millisecond difference than the ability that you use making it seemingly like it doesn't even exist when you switch your weapon so let's go ahead and show you guys right here what i'm talking about now so i'm gonna go ahead and hit the target and then i'm go actually let's go ahead and switch over to these weapons these will be my starter weapons we'll talk about these in a minute so don't pay attention to what these weapons are doing so i'm hitting the target i'm going to obliterate the target and switch my weapons at the same time doesn't even seem like there was a uh, global cooldown in the middle there at all did it at all like nothing absolutely nothing and you might notice on the target dummy right now, we managed to do that while also getting five Razor Eye stacks on the target. And also, using Glacial Advance. Now, you're probably wondering why are you using Glacial Advance if you're involving PvE or PvP. Yeah, obviously, PvE right now. Uh, on the PTR, it would be beneficial. But we are more interested in the PvP side of that, right? So, I realized after they fixed Glacial Advance to apply Razor Eyes to the enemy targets, that if I was using Gathering Storms and I was trying to apply Razor Eyes using two weapons it would not function because the moment you switch to a two-hander, the stacks would fall off. But if you're using Glacial Advance and you have a way to actually proc Razor Eyes using an ability, the game now treats it as you actually having uh, functional Razor Eyes on your weapons even when you switch to a two-hander. So what does that mean for us? It means we're going to get extra frost damage with our two-hander. And of course, as you know, in Shadowlands, that's going to make our Obliterate hit quite a bit harder considering it now deals frost damage. Next up, I'm going to be putting the Shadowlands beta footage up here on the screen so we can go ahead and take a look at that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it as we're watching it since there is no sound. All right, so starting out, Buddy Kaz is running up on this. We decided that we're going to go on the Warlock to be a more solid target. Now, the first thing he's going to do is stack up his Razor Eyes for that extra damage, for that extra proc damage. Now, we knew the kill target was obviously going to be the Hunter here, but we decided to get on the Warlock just to just kind of look at some damage. We know Warlocks are probably going to be one of the hardest things to kill uh, inside of Arena just for the pure tankiness of the class. So... We're watching it. He's just putting in some pressure here. He's restacking it. He's getting low. Sometimes he's going to attempt to pop his uh, little razor ice right there to keep the stacks up so he doesn't have to switch weapons mid-combat. But obviously in the beginning, he dual wields so he can get up five stacks pretty fast uh, comparison to obviously trying to do it with a two-hander, which wouldn't work that well. Now, right now, the Warlock's hitting him with Drain Life. He's just casting normal stuff. And you can see a little bit ago, he actually popped cooldowns with his dual wield to apply a heal that we're soon going to talk about which actually saved his life during this arena match, and also a little bit later applying some more death strikes just to kind of stay alive. So he's just going to go ahead and go through this fight a little bit here and just kind of sit on this Warlock to show off some damage, test out, kind of get a feel for what's going off. It seems that his stacks have fallen off and he hasn't reapplied them just yet, but he's going to think about it and he's going to start reapplying them very soon. I think this is when the death strikes come out. And uh, he's got to kind of save his life there from the uh, demo lock consistent damage coming out there. And this is when we're going to switch to the hunter. And obviously going to go for a kill during this match. Now he reapplies the five stacks and he's DPSing on him to get some maximum damage. And what he's told me during this is um, his actual obliterates were increasing by quite a bit. Um, close to like uh, 800, 900 damage, maybe even a little bit further. And overall seems to be like a, a bit more burst pressure than obviously not applying the stacks with the two-hander inside of uh, Frost DK PvP. So it seems like it's going to be a 
at least as long as it works and they keep it in the game for uh, who knows how long, it seems to be a very viable option even inside of rated arenas, uh, let alone during it during like, let's say, duels or world PvP, even battlegrounds if you have to survive multiple targets. But it generally seems like it's going to end up being uh, pretty good. Now you can see his health's getting low there. The burst came out. He actually reapplied the chain stacks using that uh, glacial advance again, which is really awesome to see there that that actually is coming in handy inside of PvP situations just to keep the razor eye stacks up after the initial weapon slop. So you can get in two good obliterates and then obviously switch out the weapon to do that big old two-handed burst damage because that burst is a lot stronger than using one-handers. And as you can see on top damage there, he did quite a bit of damage using that Awesome A-bomb limb grip frost spec. Next up, we need to talk about the healing macro, because obviously you guys are pretty interested in that after seeing that in the video, getting that nice big old uh, little sanguine uh, ruffian heal over there. By the way, if you guys want to see exactly what's going on, obviously, with the initial attack, we got Razor Rice. I had to whip out some old weapons to be able to do this because like i started realizing like you're gonna need a the, quite a bit quite a few weapons to pull this off if you really wanted to get like serious with this weapon swap and stuff so anyway so like that's the double razor ice obviously the next one we're gonna have coming up is going to be the uh, hysteria sanguine which realistically you should probably put this area of the main hand sanguine and offhand since you're relying heavily on the proc of the main hand instead of uh Sanguination in the offhand, but Sanguination, what it's going to do, this is going to take a while for this to kill us. We're just going to kind of melee attack it and let it whittle us down. It's going to take quite a while. Our goal with this thing is to actually hit 35% health, and what this ability is going to do is give us a nice little heal. I'm going to go ahead and open up the spell book so you guys can get a direct look at it, obviously. I can't seem to find where it's at. All right, there it is. Sanguination. Engrave your weapon with a rune that causes your death strike to deal increased damage, which, I mean, we're not really focusing on that, but you most likely are going to want to focus on that. Wait, wait, wait for the heal to proc. We're it's actually going to proc soon. There it goes. And it's going to give us 6% of our maximum health every one second, which is a nice little heal. Obviously, you want to keep the weapon on until that goes off, but the other thing you're trying to benefit from that during that time is the hysteria you have on your other weapon, which is going to increase your runic power generation on proc. So obviously, if you're hitting that target, you reach that 35% health you're also hoping that your weapon is going to proc the uh, hysteria increase on your runic power so you can actually heal for quite a bit more now let's say you're in a really bad spot and you want to heal even more let's say that didn't quite do it for you the heal came through and let's say like right now where we're not getting hysteria procs how are we going to force something to give us a little bit more runic power we can hit another macro which equips two hysteria weapons and then we can start dpsing on something if it doesn't give us hysteria proc just like it did instantly because we have two hysteria weapons going on to give us a little bit more death strike power coming off there so we can heal a lot more in combat i don't know what will because that would be actually insane now keep in mind you want to be swapping all these weapons the same way that we swapped kind of in the beginning of the video trying to remove the global cooldown so we can get off more healing capabilities so yeah, obviously using these two, you will have quite a bit more healing capability. Now the other thing we need to remember is why you're using these two weapons. And let's say you have Empower or something like that to generate a little bit more Runic Power. You could actually Runic Cap with these two weapons if we open up our character info. We are going to have 140 Runic Power, which is going to give us a little bit more Runic Power if we want a Death Coil heal and say heal ourselves up quite a bit. Now I didn't pop cooldowns during that Death Coil heal, so it wasn't nearly as much as it could be. Because Death Coil heal is easily a full heal if you do it correctly. So obviously we're getting a ton of runic power there. We just completely full healed up here on this training dummy, popping that little combo and actually generating a quite a bit more healing, um, having that extra pooled runic power. And then obviously at some certain point, let's say we have burst back up or we just need to apply a little bit more pressure. We're not trying to survive anymore. Um, the Warlock has stopped Chaos bolting our face off so we don't have to Death Strike nearly as much just to survive. We can go ahead and throw back on our two little dual-handed weapons here. Go ahead and beat up the target until we have five stacks. Obviously, we switch it during an attack so we don't waste a global cooldown. And then we go into our normal rotation with our big two-hander. And, of course, in a couple seconds, I'm going to have Pillar back up. So I'm going to, you know, burst on the target, things along those lines. And we're going to go ahead and just beat the Living Crud out of the target after we got that up. We also have, of course, the Frost Strike increase on the target. And uh, we're going to survive a lot. Now, the nice thing about that, or I wouldn't say nice thing, probably more of a bad thing for us overall, is the Sanguination has a uh, internal cooldown called Sedated or something like that. Satiated, probably more like it. 
And uh, basically, it makes it so you can only proc and use it um, every five minutes. So you're only going to be able to use it every five minutes, whether you're dueling or arena or something like that. And it's a pretty nasty debuff that seems to kind of just exist no matter what you do. I, I, I kind of like a deserter buff or something along those lines. So that ad ends up being extremely helpful inside of arena and things like that. It's just like another save button, another option. And then, of course, if you want to go deeper into kind of survivability, you can go double. Um, hysteria, hysteria to proc more runic power to get off more death strikes, which ends up being actually uh, pretty strong overall. But uh, yeah, that's pretty solid. Now we can go ahead and talk about another one, which I do kind of uh, find funny, is the warding one. Now, obviously, with warding, if you're going to be running at, let's say, uh, say a spellcaster, we're not going to be hitting the spellcaster, we're not going to be applying pressure. Double spell warding would obviously be the way to go since you will have a more of a proc chance with it on two of your weapons instead of one just kind of like hysteria and other things. Now if that ends up being incorrect, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't tested out spell warding with two hand versus one hand, but I assume with two hand it's going to proc more. And hopefully if you're not, let's say, hitting a target, doing it this way will be better. I think overall, just like if you're trying to catch a hunter, even having uh, the increased runic power and spell warding would be better than not having either of those hope you guys enjoyed this video i had a separate ending prepared talking about you know the macros and kind of how to set up your weapons and a separate way to do it if you had duplicate weapons and you're able to insert those into macros and things like that so what you got to do guys is uh, i'll go ahead and put the macros down below the video so you guys can go ahead and copy those macros over if you want to switch your weapons around pretty simple and easy and uh, there's another way to actually do it that i didn't discuss earlier in the video is you could actually save your outfits you know under your little equipment tab where you just pop out equipment and you can just save but just save the same armor but save it with the different weapons and then take that and put it on your buttons to you know switch weapons in combat it'll work the same as having an equip macro you'll just be able to do it with the same weapons and Instead of needing 10 different named weapons to make those macros function because that was something I was running into before obviously finding out that I could just save them as outfits and then that'll work for you know the same weapons because it identifies them as different so that's pretty cool so again I hope you guys enjoyed this video leave a like if you did subscribe if you want some more frosty k content in the future because we're always been uploading it. I think we've, we've been doing it for years now so again hope you enjoyed until next time this was your boy hazed